Station. This is Houston on Space to Ground 2 for Katie. Are you ready for the uh, PAO event? I think I'm ready for the event. Women's Academy of Excellence, this is Houston. Please call station for a voice check. Station, this is Leland at Urban Zen. How do you read me? How do you read me? Leland, I read you loud and clear. What a nice surprise. It's good to hear your voice, Katie. Doing great work up there. We are busy, but we're having fun. So how do you want to do things today, Leland? When you are not in space. Okay. There's a five second delay. <laughs> so what is my job when I'm not in space? Um, you know, I'm a, I've been an astronaut for over 20 years, and this is my third trip to space. I had two space shuttle missions. So a lot of that time is spent on the ground helping other astronauts get ready and also helping the program get ready for missions. I've had jobs that range from uh, trying to design how we're going to sleep and live on the space station to being the head of the robotics branch, making sure that astronauts understand how to work the robotic arm and how to do the tasks we need to do up here. Next. Thank you. Thank you. Hi, my name is Shaq, and my question is, how do you dispose trash on the space station? Shaq, you have an excellent question for exactly this week. It is very difficult. We can't just, like in the movies, open the door and throw the trash out, or even take the trash out. We have to have a, a, basically a ship to, or a spaceship to put it in, so we stuff that ship with trash, and then it, it, when it um, re-enters the Earth's atmosphere, it burns up. We have several Russian supply vehicles that come and help us do that. They bring supplies, they leave with trash, they burn up on their way home, and now this week, Week, we are loading a really huge Japanese supply vehicle that came here with a lot of important supplies for the space station. And now we are taking all of the packing material that those supplies came with, came with, and we are packing it into the HTV. So we are packing maniacs. In fact, in back of the camera you can't see, but there is just piles of giant pieces of foam that we're shielding really um, delicate pieces of equipment. Thank you. My name is Sharnija Clark, and I attend the Women's Academy of Excellence. My question is, what is your normal daily routine while in space? Well, I wake up in the morning, and I, I float or fly about 30 feet to work, which is really, really fun. As you can see, I don't have to do a lot with my hair while I'm up here, because no matter what I do with it, it's actually going to do exactly what it wants. So I wake up in the morning, I go like this, and I um, brush my teeth, I float out of my cabin, and I start reading right away on the computer about what we're going to do that day. I'll have already seen the plan from the day before and studied the things that I need to study for that day, but we always look for last minute updates. We talk to Houston, we talk to the Japanese Control Center, the European Control Center, and the Payload Control Center, and the Russian Control Center. We all say good morning, see if there's any things that each of us need to know, and then we get to work on our day. Thank you. Hi, my name is Stephanie, and I'm from the Women's Academy of Excellence. My question is, were you ever discouraged, and if so, what motivated you to continue to pursue your career? Stephanie, I really like that question because a lot of people might think that if I have this job, my whole life, you know, life must have been easy, and I always knew what choices to make, and I always did well. And 
the fact is, it's just not true. You know, I'm a real person that just makes the made the best decisions that they could at the time. You know, what college to go to, or you know, what kind of job I wanted to have, or even, you know, what what to study. You just make the best choices that you can. And I will tell you that there are discouraging days. You know, even here in space. And um, the only thing I can, you know, advice I can give you that that seems to work for me is that. I think if you're really doing your best, that's all anyone can ask of you. And some days I don't do my best, and I have to say, you know, how could I do this better? And I have to just wake up the next morning and try again. And that means I have to believe in myself. Sometimes I need, need a little help doing that, and I have friends uh, that that give me moral support about that. And I think it's just fine to need support from your friends and from your your parents for that. That's a great question, Stephanie. Thank you. Thank you. Hello, my name is Taylor, and my question is: Do astronauts get claustrophobic when they are in the airs, in their sleeping quarters? Well, I can't speak for everyone. You know, my sleeping quarters. It's like I know that now all of you are too young to know what a phone booth is like, but it's about the size of a telephone booth, and inside, um, I like to sleep kind of curled up. And so I'm sort of, you know, curled up like this, and and I can actually move around and roll around in my sleeping bag. Where when I wake up in the morning, I'm not really sure if I'm looking at the ceiling, or the floor, or the door. And the only thing that I really can tell where it is is the computer has a little light. So I don't get claustrophobic, but I I, I think almost every morning I wake up a little bit confused about which direction is up, and whether it matters here in space. Thank you. Hi, my name is Akisha, and my question is, what was the most exciting experience you had as an astronaut? Takisha, I would say the most exciting is the fact that I am living up in space. I mean, I know the launch in a rocket is amazingly cool, and it's so exciting, but. I wake up literally every day saying I am still here, and also, oh, I have so much work I need to do before I leave. You know, I, I miss being home, and at the same time, um, it's such a fascinating place to be. Where you know, I'm just learning to live in a different place, where all the rules as we know them are a little bit different. Everything is floating, including us. And we do our daily living, everything from eating and brushing our teeth a little bit differently. And there's cool science experiments that I get to do every single day. So I would say the most exciting thing for me is the fact that I am living on a space station. And for you, it's just a normal thing that you could do too. It's in the future. Thank you. Hi, my name is Talon, and my question is, are you able to see how the earthquake and tsunami affected the Earth from space? And if so, what can you see? Tylan, um, we, we can see uh, those kinds of things with powerful lenses, like 400, 800 millimeter lenses. And in fact, we take pictures of the Earth every day, at every chance that we get. It's so interesting to sort of see what's going on there. And there's been times that the crew on the space station has actually discovered, say, an erupting volcano, maybe in a place where there's no people, even before people knew it on the ground. Um, be when we heard about the tsunami, we right away started looking at the world map and trying to pinpoint when we would be over Japan to take those pictures. And you really can see just uh, the, how much sort of water is everywhere and just erosion and, and just that the, you, I mean, I can't see houses and things like that, but can just see that there was a lot of damage. And the same for the earthquake in New Zealand. So we can see a lot of interesting things from up here. It's also very beautiful. We can see a lot of interesting things from up here. It's also very beautiful. Thank you. Hi, my name is Gianna, and my question is, how does microgravity affect the way astronauts sleep? How does microgravity affect the way that we sleep? Um, for me, I have a little trouble. I, I like to sleep when I'm home, kind of all curled up in a ball. And here, our natural sort of posture, I'll kind of show you here, is, um, is to be, you know, like a little bit sort of like 
curled up like this, but not really like all the way curled up. And so to be all the way curled up, I have to pull my legs up into my sleeping bag and they don't quite fit. So I always have a little trouble getting to sleep, but then once I'm asleep, I sleep like a baby. Thank you. Hi, my name is Zena, and my question is, what does it feel like to live and work in a place with no gravity? Zena, it is, um, it's just totally delightful. Um, I will tell you, when we first came up, I came up with Paolo Nespoli and Dima Kondratiev. Uh, Dima's from Russia, Paolo's from Italy. And uh, Paolo and I had been to space on the space shuttle before, lived up here, you know, a week or two. And what we found when we first got here is, it, you know, at least Paolo and I, it was very familiar. We, we knew what it felt like to be weightless. And yet when we're trying to move around, we're still sort of learning li literally about physics, that if I am going along and I try to stop and I just reach out one hand to stop, I'm actually going to sort of tumble head over heels because I've only put one point out and all my energy is going to make me go like that. And so we are a little clumsy when we first get up here. And now um, I think automatically I sort of correct for all those kinds of things. And I can give myself a single push and I can sail all the way through a module and not hit anything and go a long ways or even just spinning. And at first when I was up here, I would try to hold on to things and always have hold on to things. And now I'm a little better at letting things go, but keeping an eye on them. Thank you. Thank you. You're welcome. And Leland, Hi, you know, if I'm going too slow, if I need to go a little faster, just let me know, okay? Go ahead. Go ahead. Hi, my name is Brianna, and my question is, how do you maintain a personal life while being an astronaut? Well, maintaining a personal life is, I think, hard for anybody who's busy, but also possible. It's just a, a challenge. Um, I'm actually somebody who's married. I, my husband lives in Massachusetts. I live in Texas, and I spent the last three years getting ready for the space station, spending about a third of my time in Russia, some in Japan, some in Europe, learning about all the things I needed to know before I would come to the space station and be able to work really hard and efficiently while I was up here for six months. So. Um, I'm already a long-distance marriage person, which is a little bit alternative. And some people would say, well, that's different, and it's not the same, and it's probably not as much or as good as what's quote-unquote normal. And I think that if you have a challenging situation, you just have to figure out what's, what's good for you and not worry about what other people, whether other people might think that it's different um, or, or not not as good. You know, for my husband and I and our son, uh, I think it works really great. But I will tell you, I work really hard at communication. I can call on the phone from here um, every night. Certainly, I talk to them, I think, every day, but three days that I've been here, I talk to my family. And we do things like read stories from space, my son and I, and uh, and try to make sure that we talk about all the important things uh, that, that husbands and wives need to talk about. So I work hard at communication because it is a challenge, but it's definitely possible to have a busy life and a family. Thank you. Hi, my question, oh, hi, my name is Chad, and my question is, where do astronauts store their food if there are no refrigerators in space? A lot of the food, Chad, that we bring up here or that is sent up, up here for us um, is uh, food in packages, just like in the military they eat in, in places where they're not going to be able to have a lot of refrigeration or um, even fresh water. We have fresh water, but a lot of our food is either in packages where we just heat them up or just cut open the package with scissors and eat them, e eat things, things like beef stew or, um, I don't know, uh, Chinese food or Thai food, uh, Thai curry. Um, all sorts of things like that, Mexican food. But then I also have food that's dehydrated, and I add water by going up to our water dispenser, and it's almost like a needle, and I squirt water in there. The food gets hydrated. I would say all the food, you know, looks kind of bad, but it all actually tastes pretty good. Thank you. 
My name is Nasia, and my question is, what are some of the challenges of being an astronaut? One of the challenges for me is that we have to know about a lot of things. We have to learn about a lot of things. And, you know, so, you know, there's just a lot to know. And the way that I do that is I try to just do all of my homework and, um, and I try to just, uh, you know, make sure that it's not that I have to remember everything, but I have to know how to find that information. So I try to be resourceful about where I store information and so I can get it when I need it. But I would say, you know, sometimes, um, actually the, the nice part of it is that I feel like when I'm maybe sitting on an airplane looking for something to do, I could actually read about anything in the whole wide world, whether it's photography or art or chemistry or engineering or you name it. If I read about that, I would use that in my job as an astronaut. So we do a lot of different things, which I really like. And, uh, and I will tell you that I'm just always learning things every single day. Thank you. Hi, my name is Nandi. And my question is, what are some of the feelings and thoughts you have when you're in space? You know, it's funny. There's some days when, you know, I have a regular day just like everybody else where maybe there's things that I'm happy about. Maybe there's things that I'm frustrated about, you know, especially there's sometimes I have sort of bad days where I'm frustrated. I would say up here, sometimes it's so busy that I don't have time to do all the things that I think I should be doing up here. So I have, you know, frustrating days where I, I have those same kind of, I think, frustrating feelings that, you know, everybody gets down there on the ground too. And then there are times that I just, you know, as I give myself a push and I sail through a module, or um, I'm, I'm a flute player in my spare time. I like to play the flute, and so sometimes at night I'll be playing my flute and just kind of, you know, floating around, playing, kind of running into things, and, and it reminds me of things that I like to do. And so, you know, then I feel special and I feel kind of, um, you know, I feel a little bit like I'm back home. So I think you have all the same feelings up here. It's just that you're alone. And I mean, I have crewmates too, and sometimes you don't have the people there to share them with, and you have to save them up and write them down or call the people and uh, talk to them. Thank you. Okay, last question. My name is Tony, and my question is how do you entertain yourself while in space? Well, Tony, it is so much fun up here where everything moves around. We're inventing new kinds of games. Like, you know, there's a game called pool down on the ground where there's a pool table and you hit a ball and it hits another ball. And, and really, if you think about your geometry and your trigonometry, then you're going to be pretty good at pool or at least knowing where the balls are supposed to go. I'm not good at it, but I know where they're supposed to go. But up here, we're, tr we're playing pool in three dimensions. And so it's just really fun to have a place where suddenly all the rules are different just because gravity is such a large force. It dominates the behavior of all sorts of materials and the way things work down on the Earth. And so without gravity, it's pretty interesting up here, and it's always fun. Thank you. Okay. All right, Katie, thank you for that wonderful uh, question and answer period. This is uh, Urban Zen. That concludes the event, and we'll see you back on the ground. Leland, I'll see you back there, too. And to all the girls there, I'd just like to uh, wish you good luck and realize that when you're thinking about what you'd like to be, you can be anything. I sincerely believe that. And you don't have to know what it is yet, but this is the time to get ready. And by coming to an event like this, you're getting ready. So enjoy today, and welcome to the International Space Station. Station, this is Houston ACR. That concludes the event. Thank you.